New episode of Spoon Stuff Story out now, go watch! Do you know when I was a school teacher, they told me that I had to teach a thing called evolution? My god, they did what? How could they do such a monstrous thing? That is unbelievable, that anyone would allow this to happen. The world really has gone to the dogs when they let idiots like this teach, let alone that it was to children, Christ. Oh, sorry, you haven't seen the rest of the video yet, have you? You might not have thought that that was what I was talking about, but no, this one is a doozy. I said, I can teach that, no problem at all. I'll show you how to teach evolution, it's very easy. Teaching evolution is very easy. Well, that's news to me. I mean, okay, the basic concept isn't super hard to grasp, but when you say teach evolution, I have to assume you mean more than the most basic facets of it. And at that point, calling it easy is just a bit weird. That is, unless you have absolutely no understanding of evolution whatsoever, and you teach some asinine shit that you think is evolution, where, well, that is easy. It's just not very smart. What a strange doctrine. Someone with the New World Order emblazoned atop their whiteboard probably isn't one to be telling others about their strange doctrines. Also, evolution isn't a doctrine, it's a science, a real one that works. Even if you don't like it, even if you don't understand it, it's not going to change the fact that it's a real thing that works. And frankly, you motherfuckers who deny it benefit from the work of others who actually understand it and work on it every single day. Because even if you don't partake in, say, the medical industry for whatever reason, some good, that often have little or nothing to do with the actual medicine itself, some bad, that are usually based in ignorance, you probably know someone who does, even if it's just the guy who delivers your stupid pills to you so you can continue to be dumb instead of being a useful member of society and become some sort of preacher instead. What strange minds these people must have. Maybe some of you are here tonight. Doubtful. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what this is supposed to be, but I don't think it's a sermon for smart people with actual functional brains that understand the basics of various sciences. I'm pretty sure it's actually the duh convention for big stupids who barely know how to words, let alone think. Very strange indeed. Have a look at it. You divide your board in half like this. On one side you write the word God. Well, of course you do. I mean, that's what I do. And on the other side, I, of course, write whiskey. And then I list all the things that each of them have done for me. God has done, uh, well, we'll come back to that one. Whiskey has made me put up with idiots like this. It's given me good times. Hell, it even helped me to meet Mrs. Six. So in that regards, whiskey literally helped me get a family. And let's try God again. Um, I guess he causes the idiots that I need the whiskey to deal with. So... Thanks? And on the other side you write the word nothing. Uh, wait. This was supposed to be about teaching evolution, but neither of those things have anything to do with actually teaching evolution. What the hell? No wonder you used to be a teacher if that's how you start subjects. What happened when you were asked to teach something like basic maths? Well, you take two columns, and then you write spaghetti in one, and origami in the other, and then, well, isn't it obvious, maths isn't real. And then you say to the children, have a look around at the world of design. Well, before you even get into what is going to be your obvious quote-unquote point, the world of design. Let me stop you right there. What makes you think that any of it was designed? And how do you know that that conclusion is even remotely correct? You see, this sort always loves these little word games, because instead of saying things like formed, they will say created, because formed has no direct done-by-person meaning, but created does, even though using formed would still be fine if God formed the universe, but leaves things open to a universe formed some other way, which just cannot be allowed to be even considered, you know, because of how honest they are. And where do you think it came from? Do you think God designed it, or do you think it was designed by nothing? Wow, hell of a false dichotomy there. Because there's more possibilities than just God did it or nothing do. And interesting how you're going with, well, I made this logically fallacious starting point, and then when children who likely have underdeveloped critical thinking skills don't spot what a piece of crap I am, I get to win automatically. Hooray for me and my big brain. Ah, the idiot laughs of the damned, well, damned stupid, because anyone who thinks that that is either funny or, you know, smart is an actual fucking...
fucking moron. God damn, I was joking about this being a stupid people convention, but maybe I was a little bit too soft on them, eh? Forget about the amoeba, forget about the primeval germ, let's go straight back to nothing, shall we? Let's be honest. What are you talking about? Are you implying that if evolution am true, that the universe has to come from nothing? You know that there are a lot more options than that. It's false dichotomy boys again. No, mate. There could be a god with the fact that evolution is true. Now, there are a lot of gods that get kicked out of their books being literally true club for that reason. But any all power boy should be perfectly capable of creating a system that are, well, you know, the ones we actually see. It's just always weird that no religion created before the facts we know ever reflect those facts when God totally wrote slash inspired them, almost like he didn't. And if we go back to nothing, we can only assume that nothing was designed. Nothing was designed or nothing was designed. I mean, I get that you're playing word games again, but I would love to know which one. Unless, of course, you are being deliberately obtuse in order to be confusing, but also sound clever to stupid people when... I mean, it doesn't speak highly of your honesty, now does it? I mean, I run a channel deliberately not to be taken too seriously, and even I try to talk with actual clarity when I want to make a point. And therefore nothing is here. Because if nothing designs nothing, there's nothing to design. And there's nothing to be made, you'll agree? Sorry, I had to inflict that on you, because so far this whole thing has been nothing but sophistry, but that was, you know, the worst. At least, so far. I can only hope he doesn't pull that shit again, but no, that was ironically a whole lot of nothing you said there. Nothing that, more importantly, had nothing to do with evolution. You see, even when I ape him for effect, I still sound more lucid than he does. It's like this guy's a professional idiot. Oh, wait. The argument now is finished. It's all over. I mean, you're not wrong. No one is going to argue against what you said, but that's because what you said was incoherent nonsense. You didn't describe evolution. You didn't even attempt to describe it, honestly. And then you strung a bunch of nonsense together in order to bamboozle people who, frankly, already agree with you. So why you feel the need to trick them is just completely baffling. I can only assume you get a kick out of it. We don't need a court case. Well, that I do unironically agree with. We 100% don't need any court cases when it comes to science. Anyone who says this thing must be true or false because X court case said so is about as scientifically illiterate as a person can be. Courts don't decide what reality is. Courts merely make decisions on things presented in that courtroom and based partly on previous decisions, including wrong decisions. So to think that that's a space for determining absolute fact is foolish at best. I'm not saying it doesn't have its place, but it's certainly not in making decisions about science. Creationism versus evolution, we don't need a court case, it's all finished now. You genuinely think that because you wrote literally two words on a whiteboard that you have completely demolished a scientific field. If you think that's what you've done here, you are possibly one of the stupidest people I have ever covered on this channel, and that is f saying something. Even the dumbest people I have covered with their evolution debunked in five minutes nonsense at least use that five minutes to prove that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But you haven't even brushed upon the shit you don't understand. It's almost impressive. That is the choice. Choice? I mean, if you aren't interested in facts about reality, it's a choice, I guess. But even then, there's still more than two choices. But I don't think anyone at this point is unaware that you are, well, unaware of that fact. But even then, it's not really a choice in regards to what is actually correct and what is gibberitic nonsense created by scientific illiterates from the stupid ages. But there I go again, showing my reality bias like an asshole. And then I watch television programs and I hear about these wonderful things that God has made and they dive in the sea and they find stuff they've never seen before. God made something that dives into the sea to find stuff they have never seen before. I mean, that's what you said, and it sounds like you're saying that God invented submarines, which, well, I'm pretty sure he failed his engineering degree. I mean, just look at the shit that he's made before. I'm amazed anyone let that guy make anything because he's so freaking bad at it. A kid, of course, he's saying, we found stuff that he made and stuck at the bottom of the ocean. Even though, why would he do that? We wouldn't see it for literally thousands of years and offers no benefit to anyone or anything. It's smart. And so I tell the children that a scientist, a definition of a scientist, 
is a person who is discovering some of the things that God has made. That's not even remotely a definition of scientist. You might want to read one of those dictionary things. I would have thought you had heard of one before, but then I remember your right two words and claim you are correct teaching technique. And obviously, knowing the definitions of things isn't required. Also, even if we give you that definition, that wouldn't change the fact that scientists found out the way God made them with evolution, right? If that's how it's done, and that you must presuppose your God, why can't you just accept that's how he did it? This isn't difficult. That's what a scientist, he hasn't shown us everything yet. Do you mean God hasn't? Well, that's fine, but what is weird is that he never bothered to tell us what we will find in the places we haven't explored yet. And for some reason, if he tries, it's wrong. Again, almost like the Bible merely contains knowledge available at the time and then is attributed to God rather than actually being from God. The deeper in the sea you go, you find more stuff you didn't even know was there. God doesn't even care if you find it or not. He's a, he's a designer. <laughs> yeah, he does. In fact, literally, according to Book though, he brought them all to Adam and had him name them. If that's not caring, I don't know what is. Although I still stand by my argument that if Adam had named everything, we would be on about dog 700 and bug 50,000 in terms of names at this point. A, a, a peacock came into our building. We were down the country preaching at a place called Cal Ken. Anybody know Cal Ken? Know it? I don't even know what the next town over to mine is called. I think it's probably Arsholeville, because as all people from any given town know, that one town over from them is just the worst and has the worst sports team ever, mostly because they keep beating ours. A clear sign of a complete lack of skill. Do you know where that is, dear? It's in from Albury, Wodonga. Oh, Berry Wodonga. I don't want to sound ignorant, it just kind of happens, but you can't deny so much of Australian towns sound like they're making up names on the spot. Wallowa and Bendigo and all that jazz. Why can't they have proper sensible town names like Cockermouth and Shitterton? No, I'm not making those up. And personally, my favourite is Fingering Ho. I can't believe we are allowed to be a real country sometimes. We had wonderful meetings there in a farming area and we were staying on a farm and a peacock came into the house one night and he went squawk. Which we of course all understand is the peacock language for God am a big real guy who invented me so the idiots could go, ooh look, pretty feathers. And I looked at the peacock and said to May, look at the beautiful colours. An old farmer told us this, he said an artist could paint those colours on that peacock, but only God could build the feathers so they come out ex exactly the right length. So all the patterns are perfect on both sides. A farmer told you that, did he? Well, I'm convinced. Farmers well known for their extensive knowledge on the biological engineerings and whatnot. It's weird that a scientist didn't tell you that, or f even any kind of actual engineer, but someone whose job absolutely doesn't require them to have any knowledge of anything that could inform him of that whatsoever. And I'm not saying that no farmer could have that knowledge, but you didn't even give them that in your little story. And frankly, is this how you learn things? You just ask people who are in no clear way experts and as long as they agree with your god idea they must be right i mean i joked about my particular bias earlier but you wear yours like a badge of honor you're supposed to try and remove your biases to get the most accurate information not embrace them you dumb schmuck so at the judgment all it takes is one peacock and everybody's gone what seriously the hell do you mean by that because some farmer thinks he knows something about peacocks that he clearly doesn't. That means that no one can deny your massive misunderstandings and misrepresentations of science? Well, sorry, buddy, but nothing works like that. I mean, fuck. You just try to prove that you need to be God to make something like a peacock fella. I'll bet you can't. You know why? Because that's nonsense, and I think you know it. <laughs> it's all finished with a peacock, that's all. It doesn't need to prove anything else. My god, you really do think that is a good point, don't you? How in the hell did you get into a position of teaching children fucking anything? That's amazing. I mean, I can only hope that that's a lie and what you actually did was sit in a room on your own and talk to cardboard cutouts of children. But frankly, we don't seem to live in a world where anything that makes sense happens and only the worst version of anything is the one that actually goes through, at least when humans make any of the fucking decisions. And I was excited. And then I hear these men on television saying, 50 million years ago, <laughs> whales crawled out of the sea. 
I am 100% sure that no one said anything of the sort because whatever the ancestor of whales was 50 million years ago wasn't a fucking whale. This is how I know you don't know what you're talking about. That you just say things that you think the science says instead of bothering to learn anything. And then you say shit that is obviously wrong but only to people who don't have any idea what they're talking about. And then you all pat each other on the back about how smart you all are for knowing how right you are with zero effort in your part. It would be pathetic if it wasn't so infuriatingly stupid. And they dropped their fins and they grew legs. <laughs> I thought that's interesting. You know, I think shit I made up is interesting too, but I don't assume that it all reflects reality. And I don't assume that it reflects what other people that I clearly don't have the cognitive capacity to understand think, believe, or say. And that's because I'm not a massive asshole who lies to kids for my own personal gain. I lie to adults, but only when it's funny. By the way, you have convinced me with how smart you sound, how right you are about everything, and how good looking you are. Good job. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-